Hey, what's going on guys and girls? Hard Drive here. Fine Tune CB. There's going to be a couple more videos of this radio. This one here and how they can go out the door. And this one here is also going to get matched up to a hopper 8-pill amplifier. Same hopper amplifier that you can find down the list a little ways. Got the red fan in it. Okay, now this one specifically and also I've, I've gotten quite a few PMs on these things burning up, they want them tuned, etc. They got the HGs in them. Yeah, I know. Well, these aren't going to be cheap radios. Can't help it. Are they worth the money? No. If you're wanting the update, and the amp does require slight retuning, with the matched Red Dot Toshiba 2290s, installed that's an additional 150 okay is this a good radio yeah there's really nothing like it that you can purchase to run barefoot or with a box so I'll get into it here in a little bit also you'll find videos on this radio down below too out of the box as I get into the service monitor and or the spectrum analyzer dispersed emissions Pay attention to this video and the older ones that I got that are recent and other videos that you might see on YouTube. We like blowing covers, you know what I mean? Let me get this out of the way. It's been a long couple days, so bear, bear with me. Matter of fact, this is like video number damn three. The last one, it just stopped recording, so I had to reformat the disc. So I'm kind of like, uh, I'm getting used to doing this video already. Getting aggravated though. So, uh, made in Malaysia, it has the old style channel selector, just like the older one. Variable power, fairly linear, half power runs the best. This will be a great radio to run with an amplifier due to the fact it is bipolar RF multi-mode self-biasing transistors. They will be much more reliable than MOSFETs when you're using the amp, if there's any issues with uh, IMD, higher SWR, static charges like lightning, etc. out in the atmosphere, dead batteries, charging your batteries, jump starts, which by the way, always disconnect your radio if you're getting a jump start. Always. Okay, so let's get this thing started here. It's going to be full power. It'll be right at a 40 watt carrier. Let's put the 50 in there to make sure. It does fluctuate a little bit with temperature. Not a lot, but a little bit. Okay. And so right on 50 continuous. Close when it warms up. Again. So that's stroking pretty good. And all the way down wide open. It's right before it goes into compression, but we're not pinching anything. Running nice and cool. Does have max mod. Everything stays nice and cool. Of course, if we run it like this for a half hour, it's going to get damn hot, which you don't want to do. Half power, a 25 watt carrier. I don't care who you are. That's awesome. Focused in there. Yep, yeah, that's nice. And also at uh, say 30 megahertz, it's doing a really good job. Now you'll see some people trying to snow you doing stuff like this. Notice how you can't see anything? How convenient, huh? Pay attention to that. Uh huh. Alright. And say down at the one watt. See the fan just kicked on. I didn't pull the amp out when I replaced the transistors to uh, actually see the manufacturer of fan. 
Well, from the way it sounds, it sounds like an RCI fan. It's spinning pretty decent, pretty fast, and it's true. It's not like lagging or anything. It's, it sounds like a better fan. Again, like I said, I can't guarantee that. I didn't pull it out. It wasn't necessary. You know, the whole circuit board from the heat sink. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the video with a close-up. Anyways, all the way down, low power, like a watt, a two. That's like a watt and a half. Audio, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's just crystal clear. Get more used to looking at it than trying to listen to it because you'll only find that maximum range and clarity by viewing it. Period. Audio is 7, 8, 9, 10. That's pretty damn nice. It's real nice, actually. And half power. Why don't you look at it like this. And half power, this radio. You know, good antenna system, 1.3 or under. Here, guys say, oh, 1.5. No. 1.5 to 1 means you don't talk on your radio. That's too high. I don't care what the book says. Anyways, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Audio. Yeah, that's nice. Real nice. Now, that's not just, you know, how this comes out of the box. Uh uh. A whole bunch different. That sound quality and frequency response you can't get out of the box, and there's no internet tricks and tips for that. I'll show you the PP six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine. So just sitting there talking on it like that, you know, it's over a hundred thirty watts. Just talking one two three four five, and that's real watts. You're not gonna find no more accurate way. Period. Than what you see right here. All right. So full power. It's not gonna show much more. It's gonna generate more heat. It's got a little bit more, if you have to have it. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right about 150. Okie dokie. Alright, what else do I got to cover here? Oh, for some of you ham guys and you really, 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 really picky guys, I used to use something like this. Matter of fact, this would plug into the panel over there. This side. Get, this thing is old. This goes back to like Lodi, Ohio. Okay. Matter of fact, this goes back to Freightliner cab over, Peterbilt corn binder. This is old. And what I could do with this is replace this end. What this is, is you could do this. I'll, I'll show you a couple different things. I forget what they, you call these. These are like on the back of a stereo. Low level wires or speaker wires. Cause the, it's a female or male or ground on the outside and a little conductor on the inside. If you can imagine what that looks like right there. And this is a mono adapter that plugs into it, shrink tube. So I could replace these. Well, I made a change. And this is regular low level wire. Mono wire. Shielded just like coax. And I just put that end on it. But I made an update, an upgrade, and I'll share with you. And you can do a couple different things. Alright? If you have to put this in a tight area. This goes in and out of a radio a number of times while I'm tuning it, working on it, depending on what the radio is going through. And you multiply that times 10 times a day. That's a lot. Sometimes more, sometimes less. So I might go in and out a hundred times a day, you know. And that has to be, I have to be able to replace that. And I mentioned in another video what I do with it. I, I, I'm really hard on them because, you know, when I'm dealing with a lot of truck drivers, they're in and out my door left and right. And this, this whole side right here usually gets either solder sucked off, depending on how old the radio is, and then resoldered. And the number one thing is always this jack jack right here the external speaker jack these joints so when you heat them up I'm not going to heat this one up but you heat them up heat both of these at the same time push down see how I'm pushing 
and that puts all the pressure up against the solder joint to the trace let it cool and then you push up for this one right here that one there I'll burn my fingers and look at the camera so I'm pushing on this thing on it a lot but uh, considering I bought this and I've redone all this stuff up here I'm using a whole bunch of more BNC a lot more BNC and the BNC's turn okay there it is. See it? It's quality. RF parts. Go online. Alright. See it? Now, for some of you guys, I always say do not use the 45s on the back of your radio. I'm going to get into that in a minute. And I'll trust you guys to follow directions. If you don't follow directions, it's your fault. Alright, so now pop all this together. Don't use junk, you gotta use the good stuff. Alright, see it? This swivels and this swivels. And naturally I, I crimp this myself and that's the shrink tube that I use. So now you can put this in like this. Alright, and now if you purchase, I'll let you guys look up the number because I can't see it from here and it's upside down anyway. These are Amphenol 90 degrees. You're going to see they're like 20, 30 bucks a piece. The reason I, I would always tell everybody, don't buy them because the typical CBer won't buy them. Oh, I'll get the same thing for three bucks. No, you're not. Most of the people watching my YouTube videos now are, are paying attention and they're not nickel dimers. Some of you guys might be, and we're weeding them out. Anyways, you could put one of those on there and you'd have something like this. And it's a lot shorter. Yeah, the power plug is going to stick out. You might have to go the other direction. All right? So you have to go like this. Say if you're in a Peter car, etc., corn binder. Now, they're that way. I still don't recommend bashing it in the hole like some of you guys do. Don't do that. If it doesn't slide in real easy, you got a problem. So that'll help you with a few things. But make sure you look up the Amphenol right angle UHF connector. That's what they're called. And I, they're upside down. I can't read them from here. Otherwise, I tell you. Hunky dokey. And they do work good. They're strong. They don't pull off, you know, as long as they're locked. And they swivel, turn. I like them. Wears out. Just pop another one on. I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover so far on this radio and there'll be another one the tune will be entirely different again to match it up to a class C so I hope you got something out of this hope everybody has a great morning and a weekend it's a uh, 116 Friday morning everybody have a great day 163 down by the Rio Grande. I'm out of here.